I've written over here on the board the definition for a reference angle. It's the acute angle between the terminal side of theta, theta being in standard position, and the x-axis. And We write it like this, theta with a little hat on the top, like this. So here's 30 degrees, the reference angle is 30 degrees. Here is the terminal side of 150 degrees, and there's the reference angle, 30 degrees. Here is 210 degrees, that is the terminal side of 210, when 210 is in standard position, and the reference angle for that is 30 degrees. Likewise, here's 330 degrees, and the reference angle is 30 degrees. So the reference angle for any angle in standard position is the uh, acute angle between the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Now, why reference angles are important is because of this theorem we have. The trigonometric functions of an angle and its reference angle differ at most in sine, S-I-G-N sine, or algebraic sine. So the only difference between the, a trigonometric function of an angle and its reference angle will be in where the one is positive and the other is negative. They always have the same absolute value or the numerical part is always the same. So we want to practice, first of all, finding reference angles. Here's our first example. Problem number one, I have 143.4 degrees. I want to find the reference angle. Let's just draw a little picture of this to start with. Okay, remember this is zero. This is going to be 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and then back up here that will be 360 degrees. So 143.4 degrees, that's going to terminate in quadrant number two. So let's just draw some angle in quadrant two. And I'm going to say this is 143.4 degrees. Now the reference angle is this angle right here. So that's going to be the reference angle, and I'm going to call that theta with a little hat on it. The reference angle is 180 degrees, subtract 143.4 degrees. If I do that arithmetic, I end up with 36.6 degrees. 36.6 degrees, and that is the reference angle for 143.4 degrees in standard position. So this diagram right here doesn't have to be very accurate. I just want to make sure my, the terminal side of my angle ends up in the correct quadrant. And that gives me a little picture so I know in which order to do my subtraction right here. So 143.4, subtract it from 180. The difference is 36.6 degrees. That's the reference angle. Here's our next example. 195 degrees, 10 minutes. Let's draw a picture again, just for reference. 195 degrees, 10 minutes. Well, if this is 180 degrees right here, 195 degrees, 10 minutes is going to be somewhere in quadrant 3. So here is my angle, theta, 195 degrees, 10 minutes. The reference angle that I'm looking for is this angle right here. To find the reference angle, I'll simply take 195 degrees, 10 minutes, and subtract from it 180 degrees, 0 minutes. What I end up with is 10 minutes and then 15 degrees. So 15 degrees, 10 minutes, that is the reference angle for my angle, 195 degrees, 10 minutes. So again, this diagram right here is really just for reference, so I can see the order to subtract in. But the reference angle is always the acute angle between the terminal side of theta, the angle we're working with, and the x-axis. Um, next, let's find the uh, trigonometric function of an angle uh, using the reference angle. Here we go. For problem three, we want to find the cosine of 240 degrees. Okay, and I want an exact value for this. So let's draw a picture again. Just for reference, 240 degrees, remember this is 180 degrees right here, so 240 degrees is going to be between there and 270 degrees, so I'll draw a little picture of this. Here it is right here. So this is my angle right here, 240 degrees, and then the reference angle for this angle is going to be this angle right here, which should be 180 uh, taken from 240 degrees, or 240 degrees subtract 180 degrees will give me this, which is 60 degrees. So my reference angle is 60 degrees, and the cosine of 240 will be equal to, the numerical value of the cosine of 240 will be equal to the numerical value of the cosine of 60 degrees. The only difference will be in the algebraic sign. 
So I'm in quadrant 3 with 240 degrees. In quadrant 3, I know cosine is negative. So this is the reference angle theorem right here. And what it says, the cosine of 240 and the cosine of 60 will differ at most in sine because 60 degrees is the reference angle for 240 degrees. So first I find the reference angle, the cosine of 240 will be plus or minus the cosine of 60. I fill in the, the negative sign right here because my original angle, 240, terminates in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3, cosine is negative. Now let's finish the problem. So this will be negative. Cosine 60 degrees is 1 half. So the exact value for the cosine of 240 degrees, negative 1 half. Here's our next problem. Let's find the secant of 300 degrees. Well, the secant of 300 degrees is going to be 1 over the cosine of 300 degrees. Now, let's find the reference angle for 300 degrees. Here is my coordinate system. 300 degrees will be over here in quadrant 4. There's 300 degrees in standard position, and you can see that the reference angle to get back to the x-axis, 360 degrees, is going to be 60 degrees. So I have 1 over, now cosine in quadrant number 4 is positive, so plus cosine of 60 degrees. The sign, I'm just putting a plus sign here so you can see that I did assign the correct sign. 60 degrees is the reference angle for 300 degrees. So I have 1 over cosine of 60 again is 1 half. 1 over 1 half is 2. So finding exact value and exact value for the secant of 300, first we change to a cosine, find the reference angle, check the algebraic sign, positive or negative, depending on the quadrant in which our original angle terminates. In this case, we terminate in quadrant number 4, and in quadrant number 4, cosine is positive. So I get 1 over 1 half, the reciprocal then gives me 2. Uh, the next problems we want to work involve using a calculator. I've written approximate with a calculator, here is cosecant 575.4 degrees. Now, I don't have a button for cosecant on my calculator, so I'm going to have to use my reciprocal identity and write this as 1 over the sine of 575.4 degrees. Now, with a calculator, we don't need to worry about reference angles or anything else. We just enter 575.4, press the sine button, and we will get this right here. Now, there's two different ways to do this depending on what kind of calculator you have, a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator. First of all, for a scientific calculator, the order that we would do this in would be we would enter 575.4, press the sign button, and then after that, take the reciprocal of the result. If we do that, we'll end up with negative 1.5. 7263 rounded to four decimal places. If I'm going to use a graphing calculator to solve this same problem, then what I'll have is the um, uh, 1 divided by the sine of 575.4 degrees. Where I enter the number 1, then this is divided by and then sine 575.4. I don't need parentheses if I just have one angle right here. So it's 1 divided by sine 575.4. Do that on the graphing calculator, and you'll end up with this exact same result right here. Here's our next problem. We want to find theta if sine theta is negative 0 0.3090 and theta terminates in quadrant 3. Now we're going to assume theta is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees terminating in quadrant 3, and the sine of theta is equal to this. Now, in this case, we are going to have to use our reference angles to uh, find this angle theta. If we just enter this into the calculator, that is um, negative 0 0.3090, and then take the inverse sine of that, we end up with negative 18 degrees. If we just enter this number into the calculator, use our inverse sine button like we did previously, we end up with negative 18 degrees. Now, negative 18 degrees is not in quadrant 3, so something's wrong. So we have to use our reference angle theorem. What we'll do is, is forget about this sign right here and just find the reference angle by finding the inverse sign of 0 0.3090 without the negative sign. Now, if I do that, I end up with a reference angle of 18 degrees. So I find that by finding the inverse sign, use my inverse sign function on the calculator of 0 0.3090. So I just enter this on the calculator, no negative sign, press my inverse sign button, and I end up with 18 degrees. 
Now I know theta terminates in quadrant 3, so I want to go into quadrant 3 and find the angle whose reference angle is 18 degrees. So I'll just draw a little picture right here. Go into quadrant number 3 with a reference angle of 18 degrees. Here's 18 degrees. So my, the angle that I'm looking for is this angle right here. 18 degrees is uh, theta hat, the reference angle, so the actual angle itself, theta, must be 180 degrees plus 18 degrees, and that is 198 degrees. So in this case, if I want the angle whose sine is negative 0 0.3090 that terminates in quadrant 3 and is between 0 and 360 degrees, I have to use this reference angle theorem here. If I enter, if I enter this number right here and find the inverse sine, I get negative 18 degrees. That can't be right because that angle terminates in quadrant 4. Let's try another one of these problems. This time, let's find theta if secant theta is 1.4325 and theta belongs to quadrant number 4. Now again, I don't have any secant buttons or inverse secant buttons on the calculator, so I'm going to have to use my reciprocal relationship here. 1 over cosine theta is equal to 1.4325. That means that cosine theta is 1 over 1.4325. So I'll do this on the calculator and press inverse cosine, so I'll get my reference angle from this as the reference angle comes out to be, let's see, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, 45.7 degrees. 45.7 degrees. Now, I want theta to be in quadrant number 4 with a reference angle of 45.7 degrees, so theta is going to be equal to 360 degrees. Let's write this here. 360 degrees, I'm going to write this underneath, minus 45.7 degrees, and then that will come out to be 314.3 degrees, so 314.3 degrees. So here is theta, 314.3 degrees, and I find it by using my calculator to find the reference angle. I enter this 1 divided by 1.4325, use my inverse cosine function, that will give me 45.7 degrees, that's the reference angle. Then I know that my angle is supposed to terminate in quadrant number 4, so I go to 360 degrees, subtract off that reference angle, 45.7, and I get my angle theta, 314.3. Now we can check this by taking 314.3, finding the cosine of it, and then taking the reciprocal of that, we should come up with 1.4325, and you might want to check that. Here's our next problem. This time sine theta is equal to negative square root 3 over 2, theta belongs to quadrant 4. Now we can do this one without using a calculator. Now, I know that the sine of theta being square root 3 over 2, this numerical part right here, is, tells me that theta, the reference angle for theta, that is, is going to be 60 degrees. The fact that theta terminates in quadrant number 4, so I'm, I'll draw in a, a reference angle of 60 degrees in quadrant number 4, and that corresponds to an actual angle of 300 degrees. So if I take 360 degrees, subtract off 60 degrees, I end up with 300 degrees. So this implies that theta is equal to 300 degrees. So my reference angle, 60 degrees, comes from the square root 3 over 2. I know that the sine of 60 degrees is square root 3 over 2. The negative sign puts, this, puts uh, theta in either quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. This tells me that it's in quadrant number 4, so I draw 60 degrees a reference angle of 60 degrees in quadrant 4, that corresponds to an angle itself of 300 degrees. Now we're going to use this reference angle theorem quite a bit throughout the course, so you want to become familiar with it.